Just go ahead and cremate him and come back home, would you? After finishing my father's funeral, I made a tearful call back home. Elvera, my eldest son's wife, screamed into her phone so loud it seemed like it might burst. Look, if you don't come back now, we'll have to cancel David's beauty salon appointment. What's more important to you, a dead old man or your young grandson? That's when something inside me snapped. How dare she refer to my dearly departed father as just some old man? I've been quiet and obedient until now, but I've reached my limit. Sarah, is something wrong? I turned around to find Jaka, my late husband's adored junior colleague, standing there. Jake, I have to go home. Aren't they starting the cremation soon? When I told him about Elvira, his expression changed immediately. His eyes filled with anger. Sarah, you don't have to go. I'll talk to her. Without waiting for my reply, Jake turned and sprinted away. I thought of calling him back, but then reconsidered. If Jake's genuinely angry, my daughter-in-law won't get off easily. Well, maybe that's for the best. She didn't even allow me to pick up my father's remains and was trying to boss me around. Let's consider Jake's sudden intervention as a bolt from the blue. There's a thing called karma, after all. I'm Sarah, a 55-year-old administrative assistant at a pharmacy. Since losing my husband six years ago, my life was peaceful living with my eldest son, Elliot, until he got married. He works factory shifts that don't align with my schedule, but life was tranquil. The tides turned about four years ago. My eldest son suddenly announced he was getting married. Turns out his girlfriend was already pregnant. Things just sort of flowed that way. On our third date, you could say we were blessed with a baby. Third date? You've barely been together. What can you do? A child is on the way. There wasn't much I could say to that. My daughter-in-law had lost her parents at a young age and had no one else to really on for her first child birth, so they moved into my house. Having a stranger in my home didn't sit well with me, but given the circumstance, I couldn't say no. After moving in, my daughter-in-law started out humble enough, but that changed after giving birth. I've shown mother-in-law her grandchild's face, and one day, I'll be the one taking care of her. I'm busy with a baby, so you can handle all the household chores. She became pretty brazen about it, complaining if meals, I, laundry, or cleaning fell behind. I thought it would change as baby David grew, but even at three years old, it hasn't. I've put up with her because, well, what else can you do? Any mention of helping out is met with nonsense. Do you realize if anything happens to you, mother-in-law, I'm the one who has to look after you? Well, yes, but let me focus on work and raising my child for now. You've got everything else, right? She calls herself an illustrator. She does have some gigs, but she's an unqualified freelancer who doesn't even handle her taxes properly. She neglects parenting, too. For some reason, she insists on bathing the child herself. But beyond that, she doesn't seem to care much. She shows zero concern for my son who's burning the candle at both ends with his three-shift job. All she seems to care about is her long, straight hair, which she treats at expensive beauty salons. In my ease, there's a growing rift between my son and his wife, but they have a child, so I've been biting my tongue and making do. My 80-year-old father has lived alone ever since my mother passed away. Living with you would make me too dependent and weaken me. It's better to tough it out alone. No matter how many times I've offered to live together, he stubbornly refused. I could tell he didn't want to burden me, his thoughtfulness shining through his words as if I would ever consider it a burden. I've always adored my dad. Since I was a kid, he was laid back, never sweating the small stuff. When mom crashed his car into the fence or when I spent the night out with my first love, he would just laugh it off. The only time he would get really mad was when I bothered other people. Every morning, we'd text each other to make sure we were both okay. Dad had worked hard to learn how to use his smartphone, mastering his messaging app. Whoever woke up first would send a sticker, and we replied to confirm we were both well. It was our morning ritual. But that morning, there was no reply from Dad. Usually, I'd get a sticker of a smiling son, his favorite. Even calling him got no response. Worried, I sped to my parents' home before heading to work. I unlocked the door with trembling hands, rushed inside, and found my dad. Dad! Dad! He was lying in the hallway, clutching his chest. I hurried over, but he was already gone. Dad! Dad! 
By the time I was desperately calling out to him, he had already passed away. Overwhelmed with grief, I couldn't do anything but cry. My eldest brother, Elliot, took care of the funeral arrangements. Thanks, Elliot. No worries, it was sudden. Let me handle it. You stay with mom. While Elliot was considerate, his wife didn't even come to see my dad's face. Funerals are just a hassle with small children. David and I won't be coming, she had promptly informed me. In my state, I didn't have the energy to be angry about her behavior. It was a small family funeral, with only about ten relatives attending. Even without her, it wouldn't cause a stir. Or so I thought. The day of the funeral was cloudless, reflecting my dad's sunny disposition. As the minister spoke, I alternated between looking at my dad's photo and his coffin, tears flowing without end. Amid my grief, I noticed something odd. My brother Elliot's pocket kept vibrating again and again. Before the ceremony, I had given him my phone to hold because my morning clothes didn't have pockets. Clearly, he was curious but couldn't check during the funeral. In the end, it had to wait. Mom, it's from Alvara, said Elliot, handing me my phone after the ceremony. It was filled with missed calls from his wife. Alvara only calls me when she needs something. I wonder if something happened to David. Elliot mused, his face serious. Well, I'll give her a call then, I said, moving to a corner in the hallway to make the call. The phone hardly rang before my eldest son's wife picked up. Do you have any idea how many times I've called you? I'm sorry. I was at a funeral, I explained. What's going on? Right after I said that, a piercing voice filled my ears. Today is David's appointment. Come home and drive him there now, she demanded. I didn't immediately understand what she meant. Okay, I reflexively responded. Then it dawned on me what she was demanding. She wants me to leave my own father's funeral to take my grandson to a beauty salon. But I can't. My father's cremation is about to start. I can't take David today, I explained. What cremation? Your grandpa isn't coming back, you know, she retorted. Really? Did you just say that, Alvera? It's inappropriate to call my father's cremation that. Just let them burn him and come back home, I objected. Ignoring my objections, my eldest son's wife ranted on, If you don't come, David's appointment will be canceled. Who's more important, a departed elder or a young grandchild? I can't believe you. Just come home right now, she concluded and hung up. I was at a loss for what to do next as I stood there bewildered, forgetting to even lower my phone. A voice called out from behind me. Sesa, is everything okay? It was Jake, my late husband's devoted junior colleague. He still visits my husband's grave every year on the anniversary of his death. A very beautiful young man, he can be quite intimidating when angered, but he's always treated me with the same respect and care as he did my husband. Today, he came to the funeral because he felt that my father was like a parent to him as well. Jake, I have to go. Isn't the cremation starting soon? My daughter-in-law insists I take my grandson to a beauty salon now. What's going on? I explained to the shocked Jake about Alvera's rude attitude and the recent conversation, how she tries to boss me around and treats me with arrogance, and how she had the audacity to call my father a dead old man. Sarah, don't worry about going. I'll talk to my wife. Fuming, Jackie immediately turned back and took off running, knowing Jackie, he probably didn't actually go to chat with his wife. Mom, are you okay? My eldest son, who came over as if on cue, gets a quick rundown of what just happened. So Jake stormed off home, right? He asked. Yes, if Alvera angered Jake, that could be a problem. Well, if that's the case, it's on Alvera, isn't it? It seems like my eldest son has no intention of stopping Jake either. In the end, I stayed to see through the cremation and the collection of my father's ashes as planned. I only returned home after placing my father's urn on the family altar. I had planned to stay at my parents' home for a while because it felt lonely to leave my dad's ashes alone. But I had forgotten a few things. Plus, I was concerned about my daughter-in-law. Don't worry too much about Alvara, said my eldest son, gripping the steering wheel with restrained anger. I don't know what she'll say when we get back, but it's absurd to ask me to come home during Grandpa's funeral. It's really gotten to me, about Alvera. Yeah, she dumps all the housework on you and has even yelled at David enough to make him cry. I'm thinking of considering divorce as an option moving forward. Hearing the word divorce from my son leaves me conflicted. Our grandchild is still young. 
Can they really separate just like that? But I too am fed up with living with my daughter-in-law. I have my concerns, but I won't oppose a divorce. In the end, in the end, I only told that much to my eldest son, Elliot. They're a married couple. They should do what makes both of them happy. But how did it come to this? I lost my husband, and my son's marriage isn't going well. My father, who was always there for me, has been reduced to a small pile of ashes. Thinking about it all, I couldn't stop my tears. I'm sorry, Elliot. Can I just cry for a bit? With that said, I cried loudly until we reached home. When we got home, the entrance was a mess. The potted plant that had been on the shoe rack had fallen over, and sandals and shoes were scattered everywhere. Even the welcome mat had been flung to the middle of the hallway. Jake really did lose his temper, my eldest son remarked with disbelief as he took off his shoes. If you get Jake seriously angry, it's a big deal. But Alira is the one at fault, so it can't be helped. With that, we walked into the living room to find my daughter-in-law sitting on the sofa, visibly stunned as we entered. She slowly turned her face toward us. Her expression was just as I had expected. There was no doubt she had been hit by an infuriated Jake. You guys? She slowly stood up as she looked at us. Judging by her steady stance, it seemed she had only been hit in the face. You think it's okay to send a guy like that after me? Isn't that criminal? I didn't send him. I just told him what you've been doing to me, Alvira, and, well, he got angry. Who wouldn't? Excuse me? You think I deserve to get punched? What is he, a gangster? He is a real one. At my reply, my daughter-in-law shut her mouth. My late husband was a gangster's son. The man who came earlier was one of his juniors. He respects me. What did you just say? I told him how you've been treating me, Alvira, and how you told me to skip my father's cremation. That's why he got so mad. As I finished speaking, a loud cry rang out. I turned to find my little grandson, who had seemingly appeared out of nowhere, crying by the door. Rushing over, I scooped him into my arms. Granny, I'm scared. I'm so sorry, little Sue. I take my grandson to my room to calm him down. Though his tears stop, he clings to me. That's when I notice a small bruise on the back of his neck. What could have caused this? As I ponder, my son, wearing a serious expression, enters the room. I'm going to stay at my parents' house for a while, I blurt out as I pass him our child. I want to distance myself from my daughter-in-law as soon as possible. I get it. I don't want to be around Alira either. Okay, I'll handle Alvira. Don't worry. Thank you. Please do. Quickly, I pack a suitcase with the essentials. All the while, my thoughts are racing. The ongoing arrogance from my daughter-in-law since she moved in. Her cold indifference to my hardworking son's health. Her audacity to demand that I pick up my grandson during my father's funeral. And her harsh words to my father. What Jake did might be socially frowned upon, but it was a relief for me. Today is the day for my son to go to his beauty salon. Get home right now and drive him there. I suddenly remember the piercing voice of my eldest son's wife over the phone, a voice cold as steel, void of any warmth. Honestly, I didn't care what she or anyone else had to say. In fact, I was even grateful to Jake for his actions. The next day, my eldest son called me while I was staying at my parents' home. Mom, can you come home now? Right now? As soon as you can? There's something important we need to discuss while David is at daycare. His voice carried an ominous tone. Feeling that this was no small matter, I sped home. As I burst into the living room, I found my son looking more serious than I'd ever seen, sitting next to his wife on the sofa. Mom, sorry for calling you like this. What's going on? Elvira has been doing something terrible to David. Terrible? That's when it hit me. I remembered the small bruise on the back of my grandson's neck from yesterday. Elvira always insists on giving him his bath herself. Could it be? I found bruises on David's neck and arms, and when I took off his shirt, I found them all over his body. That I confronted Elvira, and she admitted to pinching and jabbing David frequently. It's too much for a small child. Alvira's eyes widened. Her expression confirmed the truth of my son's words. A renewed and fiercer anger welled up within me. Her arrogant attitude and the coldness towards my son were somewhat mitigated by Jake's actions, but doing something so cruel to my tiny grandson? Unforgivable. 
That's something I will never, ever forgive. I'll forget what you did to me and Elliot after yesterday's events, but I will never forgive you for hurting David. What are you going to do? David is my son, not your mother-in-law's son. What's your point? David is my treasure. I can't have a daughter-in-law who harms him. Leave our home now. As I raised my voice, Alira looked at me with fear for the first time. My son then picked up where I left off. We're getting a divorce, Elvira. Your arrogant behavior towards mom and the disrespectful attitude towards grandpa were terrible enough, but I won't ever forgive what you did to David. We're divorcing right now. Understand? At his words, the color drained from Alvira's face. Divorce? Wait a minute. If you do that, I'll have nowhere to go. Fine. Do whatever you want. Once I tell David what you've been up to, you won't be welcome here anymore. Mom already said you should leave. I haven't had any illustration work for the past six months. What am I supposed to do if you kick me out? The daughter-in-law broke down crying like a small child. There was no trace of arrogance or tyranny in her demeanor. You brought this on yourself. If you don't leave, I'll tell that man what you did to David. Upon hearing my threat, my daughter-in-law clutched her head and started shaking, her face a mess ruined by tears and a runny nose. Stop it, okay? I get it. I'll leave. So, this means we're getting a divorce? My son asked for confirmation. His wife glanced between the two of us and slowly nodded. In the discussions that followed, they did divorce, and my son retained custody of our grandchild. Coincidentally, the tax authorities also started investigating her. She hadn't filed taxes in years despite her freelance work. As expected, she now faced significant back taxes and penalties. Finding a new place was tough for her. She finally settled into an old, run-down apartment. After the divorce, she's juggling multiple part-time jobs to make ends meet and pay off her tax debt. I saw her once on the street. She looked as though she had aged 20 years. My grandchild reaches out to me with the most adorable smile when I pick them up. They hug me tightly. You know what? What is it, David? Really, really loves Grandma. When my grandson says something like that, the heaviness in my heart from losing my father begins to melt away. My divorced eldest son, Elliot, sends David to daycare when he works daytime shifts. But when he's on evening or night shifts, he relies on me to take care of the little guy. Weekdays can be a bit hectic but time spent with my grandson is always a joy. I can't keep mourning my father forever. There are plenty of responsibilities that come with supporting Elliot. 